If you're looking for long-term sustainable returns in crypto, then you can't miss Chainlink. During the longest bear market in crypto history, Chainlink dropped to as low as $4.80. Now Chainlink is sitting at around $20, more than 4x in less than a year. And if you've been watching my videos, you know I'm a long-term Chainlink investor and I have shared about DCAing into Chainlink. So if you've done the same, congratulations, that's an easy 4x for you. But why do I suddenly want to make a Chainlink video now? Well, it's because Chainlink is doing the same thing it did before it's 4x. We are kind of going sideways and building that momentum. Usually, the longer we stay in the sideways zone, the harder it will bounce. It's just like a string. The harder you pull it, the more power it stores and then bounce off. Feel me, feel me, feel me. <laughs> But it still has to combine with solid fundamentals to sustain the price action in the long term. Otherwise, it would just pump to a certain price level and drop back down to 20 something dollars again. So in today's video, I want to do an update on Chainlink because if you are an OG in the market, you might have thought Chainlink is just a data oracle in blockchain. But trust me, Chainlink's development is way past that and Chainlink is eyeing for the top five spots in the crypto market cap. So if this sounds exciting to you, make sure you stay and watch the entire video till the end. With that out of the way, let's get started. Chainlink has seen a lot of developments, especially since 2023. It has evolved into a comprehensive platform, covering various aspects such as data management and interoperability across different blockchains. Yes, Chainlink was originally a data oracle that brings real-world data on-chain back in 2018. Before Chainlink, blockchains and dApps found it very difficult to access information about what other dApps were doing or what was happening in the real world. They were sort of very isolated from each other. This is where Chainlink comes in and it becomes particularly helpful for DeFi applications in getting real-time and accurate price feeds. But Chainlink has completely rebranded itself to not only bring real-world data to blockchain, but to become a Web3 services network. In 2023, there was a new release of a set of products for Chainlink to take on more responsibilities, not only in the world of crypto, but also in banking and Web2 world. These products include CCIP, data streams, and Chainlink functions. First of all, let's explore the first product that will unlock trillions of dollars in liquidity, and that is CCIP, which stands for Cross-Chain Interoperability Protocol. It stands out for its simplicity and broad applicability. It doesn't just link up different blockchains, but also bridges the gaps to the Web2 world. And banks have clearly chosen Chainlink to partner with because with banks' private chains, they can now use CCIP to interact with each other. The inception of CCIP is a direct response to the vulnerabilities exposed in cross-chain bridges, which have seen exploits totaling over $2.7 billion. CCIP was built to operate at the highest level of cross-chain security with multiple decentralized Oracle networks and an independent risk management network. And remember I said that it will unlock trillions of dollars is right. This is because this product aligns perfectly with what the banks want to do with blockchain, aka tokenized assets or LWAs. Big names like Swift, Citibank and the Swiss Exchange are already on board, which says a lot. The reason why Chainlink is the chosen one of the banks is because it's not only secure, but also helping the banks to break the barrier between Web2 and Web3. This means a bank could send a message to Optimism, which could then talk to Ethereum and so on. And the cool part is, even dApps like Aave can spread the wings and exist on multiple chains at once, all thanks to CCIP. In other words, Chainlink's interoperability is a lot broader compared to what Polkadot and Cosmos are doing. And if you are a big believer in the LWA sector, then Chainlink should definitely be on the top of your list. Second product they have is called the Chainlink Data Streams. 
data streams are making low latency DeFi a reality. With sub-second update speed, full market coverage in a fully decentralized manner, it becomes a perfect solution for derivative trading and give users a whole new DeFi experience. It offers a comprehensive data solution for DeFi. They don't just give you a single price point. They also provide liquidity and volatility signals Plus, you can request multiple data points within a single transaction, saving those money on those extra gas fees. A growing number of protocols are actively integrating data streams, including GMX, PancakeSwap, and APX Finance. The third product they have is called Chainlink Functions, and you might want to pay attention to this part, especially if you are a developer. Functions is a self-service Oracle platform that enables devs to connect the smart contract to any off-chain data and run custom off-chain compute in just a few lines of code. Think of functions like a trust minimize and blockchain power upgrade of the cloud-based serverless solutions we already have. It makes it a whole lot easier to bring data in and do calculations for dApps. Developers don't have to worry about managing infrastructure. They can simply concentrate on the core logic of the applications. And as we all know it, keeping developers happy is the key to the long-term success of a project. So these all new services are amazing, right? But how can they monetize them and how these would accrue value to link holders? Well, all these services, they're not free to use, right? Users are required to pay a fee, preferably in link token to access these features. Opting for payment in link entitles users to a 10% discount. Additionally, Chainlink introduces a staking mechanism where users can stake the link to support the Oracle network, earning a portion of that transaction fees. This staking system also incorporates a risk element where inaccuracies in provided data could result in a loss of the stake link, further ensuring the reliability of the network. In addition to the various payment models, Chainlink is actively working on reducing payment fraction by developing a payment abstraction solution where users can pay in any assets they want at a premium, which is then converted to Link and paid to service providers. This means users can pay fees using the credit card, bank account, tokenized cash deposit, etc. The result is that the Link token is a universal gas token, the standard form of payment for Chainlink services, either directly or abstracted into the background via conversion. And this is certainly great news to all the Chainlink holders out there. And when even more companies come in, you achieve network effects and monetization naturally follows. Chainlink will likely to continue being a popular option among institutions because it doesn't matter what chain they choose. Chainlink's CCIP able to complete interoperability between any public or private blockchain, which is the key for creating liquidity for LWAs. Institutions do not want to manually integrate with hundreds of chains. They have been clear on this as well. Chainlink's data solutions provide all the necessary data points required by tokenized assets, such as pricing, proof of reserve, identity, and more. When you combine CCIP and Chainlink data, an institution's tokenized assets remain up to date with relevant data, even as they move cross chain. This is what institutions like. So that's my update for Chainlink. If you wish to hold any Chainlink or if you are already holding some link on your exchange, make sure you transfer it to a cold wallet. My favorite one right now is Tangem. And if you want to order yourself one, make sure you use my discount code GEMGEM10 to get 10% off your purchase. Of course, link in the description box below. That's it for now and I'll catch you guys in the next one.